Okay, guys, uh, y'all know Tony. I don't need to spend a whole lot of time introducing him. Uh, his flight was delayed, and I want to tell you the effort that he's made to be here to talk to you today. It should touch your heart just to know that a man like this has made an effort to be here to talk to you. And, uh, and I hope that you... Uh, I hope that you listen to him real close. I hope you listen to him. Because he's got something to say to you. If I was picking out one person in this world to get in front of you, this, this would be the man. And so uh, that's how much respect, because he's real. He's a real deal. And so we, we're on a very tight schedule. We've already eliminated something out of his schedule just so he could be here with you. So, Tony, thank you. Let's give him a hand, guys. <laughs> It is a wonderful, wonderful pleasure and honor to be here in front of you. I was here last year, and it was uh, one of the best days of my life. I enjoyed it. Got to, to meet everybody and be with you. I love coming here. I love Coach Sparks. Uh, you guys don't know how blessed you are to have a coach who not only is good at what he does, uh, understands the game of football, but understands the game of life, and that's important to him as well. Because not every coach is like that. There's a lot of great coaches, a lot of people that know football, a lot of coaches that can get something out of you on the field, but they don't understand life and they don't care about what life is really important. Uh, so you're, you're really blessed. Take advantage of it. Uh, I tell people all the time, your college time is the greatest time in the world. I remember when I was your age, 17, 18, 19, 20, and boy, you know, high school, can't wait to get to college get away from my parents, start doing things on my own, then I get to college, and I can't wait to get out of college and start earning money and get out on my own, not have to go to class, maybe play in the NFL. And uh, it does seem like it gets a little bit better all the time, but I'll I tell you, there's nothing like the, those college years. And I just urge you to take advantage of it, to grow, build those relationships, uh, because that's what you're gonna remember. Uh, some of my closest friends to this day 30 years later, still the guys that, that I hung out with in college. So you're in a great time of life. And uh, if you were here last year, you'll remember me saying that uh, as a, a college athlete, student athlete, Christian student athlete, uh, that, that says a lot right there. But that's what you should be striving for. Uh, you want to grow in four ways. You want to grow athletically. You want to grow academically. You want to grow socially and you want to grow spiritually. And you make choices. You make decisions as to how you're going to grow and what areas you're going to grow. You all came here for different reasons, but I, I think everybody came here because of the reputation of the program. You knew if you came to Carson Newman, you're going to have a chance to play for a championship, right? Who, who was that a big reason for you? If that was a big reason to come to Carson Newman, raise your hand because you knew you were going to be on a good team the chance to win. And, and, and hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't apologize for that. That's a great reason to come. And you should grow athletically. Get better. Come closer together as a team. Maximize your potential. Win a national championship. Great goal to have. That's definitely what you want to do. But that can't be the only reason that you're there. Because those championships come and go and as great as they are, and as much as you'll cherish it, um, it, it's not the most important thing at the end of the day. I had a chance to play in the National Football League for three years, to coach in the National Football League for 28 years, played in some big games, okay? played in Super Bowls, okay? AFC Championship games, NFC Championship games, won a few, lost some heartbreakers, Still to this day, okay, nothing hurts me. None of those games that we lost hurts as much as losing my last game in college, University of Minnesota against Wisconsin, big rivalry, biggest game of the year. If we won, we probably had a chance to go to a bowl game. We ended up losing, losing to our rivals, my last game, and it was devastating. But you know what, life goes on. And 35 years later, you know, I'm still, I'm okay, even though we lost that game. Eight years ago, we won the Super Bowl. 
And it was a great feeling. I remember getting the Lombardi Trophy and holding on to it and saying, we finally did it. We won that last game. Everybody back in Indianapolis is going to be fired up. We're going to have a big parade tomorrow. And we, we did and did all that. But you know, eight years later, if we hadn't won that game, I don't know that my life would be any different. I'd still be the same person. Uh, you know, as happy as I was and as, as much as it brought us together, it's still just, just a game. Okay? So take it seriously. Grow, do everything you can to be as good as you can be, to be the team that you can be. Do everything you can this spring to win that national championship next fall. But no, that's not the most important thing. You still have to grow in three other ways. You got to grow academically. If you leave this university without getting a degree, you will have cheated yourself. You will have cheated yourself out of a great opportunity. I talk to young people all the time, kids that are thinking of dropping out of, not only dropping out of high school, I talk to some kids that are thinking of dropping out of middle school. That's, that's how bad it's gotten in our country. But, one of the privileges I had, I worked on the council for the president, for President Bush, and I saw a survey where if you don't graduate from high school, you basically lose $9,000 a year on average. Okay? So if you're going to work for 50 years, that's almost a half million dollars you're throwing away by not graduating from high school. College graduation is the same thing. You can add another ten dollars or $15,000 onto your expected earnings just because you have a college degree. So getting that degree can vault you and say, you know, on the average, I'm, I'm going to help myself by half a million dollars just by doing what, what I should do, taking care of business academically. So you want to grow that way. You don't want to throw away a great opportunity that you have. You want to grow socially as well. You want to make friends. You want to meet people. You want to grow uh, in terms of dealing with the opposite sex. Okay, many times you're going to find your wife uh, in college. So many guys marry their, their college sweethearts. Okay? But you're going to find out, you're going to grow in that area too, how to deal with people. And that's something we need to, to know. Uh, dealing with people socially is a big, big case, and I'm sure you read about it in uh, Miami with the Dolphins and what was going on in their locker room. And these are guys who are 27, 28, 29 years old, and they don't know how to deal with each other socially. And hey, I thought you were my friend, but you talked to me this way. You said this to me. You took me here and made me do this. And everybody's saying, well, that's just football. That's the way it is. That's how it is in locker rooms. Well, that's not how it is in locker rooms, okay? It doesn't matter if it's the Miami Dolphins or a junior high team. Uh, you still know how to deal with your friends in an appropriate way. That's what you learn, and, and, and hopefully you guys are learning that too. So that, that area, you definitely want to take advantage of and grow. You want to be a different person socially when you leave at 22 or 23 than when you came in at 17 or 18. That's part of the college life. And if you grow in those three ways, you're going to do pretty, pretty well in life. You know, if you grow athletically, if you grow academically, you grow socially, you'll make some things happen. You'll earn a good living. But the fourth way you need to grow is the most important. And I hope that's why you came to Carson Newman, so you could grow spiritually. My favorite verse in the Bible, and if you hear it last year, you remember me saying it, Matthew 16, 26. It says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? And 31 years in the National Football League, I saw that happen. I saw that happen a lot. I played with some guys. I played with, I played with 11 guys who are in the Hall of Fame, most famous football players who have ever played. Played with, you know, we won a Super Bowl as a, as a player. Played with some phenomenal players. I coached for 28 years. I coached, uh, matter of fact, two guys that I coached just got elected to the Hall of Fame. Warren Sapp last year, Derek Brooks this year. 
Peyton Manning's going in the Hall of Fame when he retires. Marvin Harrison's going in the Hall of Fame uh, probably next year. So I've seen these guys at the top of their profession, as good as you can be athletically. And fortunately, a lot of those guys have made good decisions and they're doing well spiritually as well. But I've seen guys win as many Super Bowl rings as you can put on your fingers, make as much money as you can make in life, and just be as messed up as you can be, and as, as miserable, and when it's all said and done, when it's all over, they don't feel good at all, because they're not doing the right thing spiritually. And so when I read that verse, it's a blessing, but it also is reality. And I can tell you, it doesn't do any good to have all of those things and forfeit your soul. Because that, that is a bad, bad, bad feeling. And I know that you've heard that message here. And I know that you understand what that means. And there's some of you that are doing real, real well spiritually. You've accepted Christ. You, Everything may not be going perfectly, but you know where you're going in life. You know that you've got eternal life waiting for you. And you know that you've got some direction. And there's some other guys who are saying, who, who have heard that message, and they said, it's just not quite time yet, or I'm not sure if it's for me just yet. I just want to say one thing to you guys today. Don't put it off, don't take it for granted, don't think you've got forever to make that decision. Last time I was here, this time last year, I've got a son who's a junior at the University of Oregon, a wide receiver. And his best buddy, his roommate, was a tennis player, captain of the tennis team. And this time last year, it just were getting ready to go on spring break, they're finishing spring practice. His, his buddy, Alex Rivello, um, was just in between seasons. They're just getting ready to start up tennis. So over spring break, they had some time off. And they said, we're going to go up to the state park in Oregon. Just take a day, we'll get a bunch of football players, a bunch of tennis players, and get the girlfriends, and we're just going to have a day to relax before we get started in spring practice and uh, you know, in the tennis season. So they go up to this place, a very scenic place where everybody goes in Oregon. There's an overlook, a cliff about 30 feet, and they decided we're going to just jump into the water. Everybody does it, thousands of people do it every year uh, at the state park. A couple of football players go and jump off. It's a big thrill. Alex jumps and turns the wrong way and ends up hitting head first. And everybody thought he was clowning around. He went down and just waiting. Well, cert certainly he's you know, going to come back up. And he's just messing with us. And then watch. Five seconds, ten seconds, and then come back up. My son went up the cliff, jumped in after him, and he said it seemed like he was right there. The water was so clear that it seemed like he was just four feet from him, but actually he was 30 feet deep. And Eric said he wasn't planning on going in the water, wasn't planning on jumping, but that was his roommate, that was his buddy. And he went in and couldn't get it. And it was right before Mother's Day last year. And I got a call on my cell phone from the head coach. And he said, why is the head coach calling me on Mother's Day? And Coach Helford said, I just want to know if you've heard what happened with Eric. And I said, no, I haven't heard anything. So he's all right. Uh, but Alex Ravello died in a swimming accident, 21 years old captain of the tennis team. And my wife and I flew out there the next day and you know, helped talk to our son and all the other guys who had been there and been part of it. Everybody's shocked and devastated. And I remember asking Eric, where was that Alex spiritually? Did he accept Christ? And Eric said, yeah, and then we talked about it a little bit, but I, don't, I really don't know. And you know what I thought at that moment? 
I said, here's my son who jumped off a cliff 30 feet into freezing water to try to save someone. But when he had a chance to save him spiritually for a whole year as a roommate, did it ever come up? Did, did they ever really talk about it? And you think you got forever. And you think, you know, hey, I can make that decision when I'm 30, when I'm 35, when I'm 40. You never know. You never know. And I know Eric would have done it a lot differently had he known Alex was going to die in April at 21 years old. But we don't know that. So don't overlook that chance to grow spiritually. Don't think it's not important. Don't think you, you'll always have a chance to, to make that, that decision. We don't know. We don't know. So I just want to encourage you today to grow. Make sure you're growing in those four areas. And I want to just take a minute uh, as we pray here. And we're going to close this up. If there's somebody here who's been on the fence, who kind of knows what they need to do, who... who understands I need to let Christ take control of my life, but I haven't really done it yet. Um, we don't know what's outside that door for us, so I want to give you an opportunity to do that today uh, as we pray and close up this meeting, okay? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for a chance to get to talk with these men, and thank you for just all the hearts here, and the camaraderie, and the team and unity. Thank you for the coaching staff that cares about these young men and prays for them. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity you've given me just to be here and speak with them and speak at the clinic tonight and, and hopefully touch some people for you. Uh, I'm going to lead a prayer right now for anyone who hasn't accepted you and wants to. You can just pray right along with me. Lord, I, I am a sinner and I know that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I know and I've heard the message that if, if I accept you, uh, you'll not only give me eternal life, but you'll guide me and lead me in the decisions I have to make every day. Lord, I want you to do that. I want to turn my life over to you today. And I, I want to do it for your glory and your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for entering my heart. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for giving me eternal life. And I, I praise your name. Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if there's anybody here who prayed that prayer with me and did it for the first time today. But if you did, I wonder if you'd have the courage just to, to stand up in front of your teammates and say, you know what? I prayed and I've got Christ in my life right now and I'm not ashamed of it. I want to let people know. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you want, you would have the courage to stand up, I'd ask you to do that. Okay. If you did pray that prayer and it's a little uncomfortable to stand up, make sure you tell someone. Make sure you tell one of your teammates, your, your coaches. Um, get people around you uh, to support you, to help you grow spiritually. It's just as important as growing athletically, academically, and socially. You want to be totally well-rounded and you want to be the best that you can be. Because um, as I said last year to the guys that were here, to win a championship, to do what you want to do on the field, to be successful uh, in, in school, you can't be average. You can't just say, hey, I could be here, but I'm satisfied being here. You want to be a champion. You want to be uncommon. You want to do the things that other people could do, but not everybody does. And, uh, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that uncommon team. I'll be watching you next year, excited, praying for you to win a championship, but I'll also be praying that you can make a difference, not only on campus, uh, but make a difference in the community, make a difference in your dorm, make a difference everywhere. Uh, you know, as Carson Newman football players who are Christian student athletes. Thank you.